Hey, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. I'm here at the Heise Studio at HIC 2019, and joining me right now, I have David Henson. He is the chairman of the board for Heise, and also the CEO and research director at the eHealth Research Center at the Australian eHealth Research Center, excuse me, at CSIRO. Wow, what a title. <laughs> All good. All right, so as chair of the board of Heise, I'd like to start there. Right. So give us kind of an update on what's going on with the organization, the Health Informatics Society of Australia. Yeah. What do you guys have on the docket working ahead for the next couple of years? So look, there's some fantastic stuff. We're very excited about what's coming up. Um, all the usual initiatives. So Heise still runs conferences and does lots of um, engagement. One of the more exciting things at, at that, uh, in that sort of area is what we're doing with states. So we have a state-based, um, a regional-based uh, set of meetings so that we, we get people together locally and they support each other in digital health and health informatics. Um, but we're also investing in communities of practice. So okay. that, and so these are across Australia where people uh, with an interest in cyber security and health or precision medicine, uh, user design and user experience uh, can get together and, and exchange ideas and write white, white papers and really contribute to the development of digital health in Australia. That's fantastic. So how big are these groups? Uh, they, look, they vary because they're at various stages. Yeah. So we're continuing to develop them um, and, and ones which kind of reach a bit of a life, end of life cycle, kind of people disperse and go on. So these things are meant to tackle real challenges uh, that we have in digital health in Australia and just bring those people who are really passionate about it. So you know, we really want those people who are passionate about and want to contribute to get involved. So, so Heiser does a great job in supporting uh, the digital health community to, to contribute those things to uh, Australia. Beyond the community building aspect yep. of things, what else are you, are you guys working on sure. in terms of like helping shape policy? I mean, I notice even here at HIC, you have a lot of government officials mm -hmm. who are around. The Australian Digital yep. Health Agency has been more and more active in recent years. So yep. what's going on? I mean, how is HISA helping kind of influence the agenda nationally in terms yeah. of what's going on in digital health and health IT? Yeah, so look, there's lots of things. One I'll mention is workforce, and this is one we are working with the Australian Australian Digital Health Agency is really looking at uh, the workforce challenges in digital health in Australia and we, we heard about um, some of that today in, in one of the keynotes, just the challenges of uh, the growing need for health informatics and digital health experience um, and, and so that's one we are working with the Digital Health Agency on. We've already launched five years ago the certification for Health Informaticians Australia, Australasia um, and we've got over 500 people who have completed that certification so that's a, a real success and we're talking now to lots of groups about how we can uh, tailor that for um, uh, uh, for particular uh, specialisations in, in healthcare, which is something which our competency um, framework for the CHIA calls out. Okay. And, um, and but also, you know, there's, underpinning the CHIA is a competency framework that we think is fit for purpose to be used across um, a, a, additional additional um, additional educational opportunities. So working with universities, working with uh, education suppliers to really grow the workforce that we're going to need. Well, where is the biggest knowledge gap at this point right now? I mean, as, you, as you're starting to develop those programs and frame them out, where sure. is the biggest knowledge gap? Um, so I think even though uh, digital health is really growing, there's more and more people using it, um, we still have a lot of IT people coming into healthcare. We have uh, clinicians who've had nothing to do with digital health yeah. all of a sudden getting involved. And so these kind of two communities, which usually don't have much to do with each other, are also all of a sudden coming together to work together. And I think there's a communication gap. They just you know don't have the same language to sure. communicate clearly. Um, so so, so they, that's where health informaticians really fit in to help with um, uh, the translation of digital information into healthcare and of healthcare into digital. And that's still a gap. We've, we've been working to close it, but it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's widening, but you know, <laughs> trying to stop it widening stop is, it is what we've been trying to do. So that knowledge gap still exists. And as far as like the younger generation coming into the workforce, how are they, I mean, is there any difficulty attracting them into healthcare? I mean, the thing is, it's like, I mean, I'm coming from a US framework, obviously, yeah. and it's like the tech scene in Silicon Valley is, you know, starting to take a look at healthcare more sure. and more seriously with with, yep. with the big tech companies coming into the space, mm -hmm. but still the majority of uh, you know a tech job or somebody who'd go into IT would be for something that is non-health related. Same in Australia or different? Um, no, I think that's probably the same in okay. Australia. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's a challenge for us. Um, 
But the, yeah, but but it, healthcare is getting more interest, um, and and I think some of the new technologies which healthcare is embracing, um, you know, from mobile health through to the challenges of interoperability um, with it between uh, settings, um, getting our workforce really uh, efficient and, and increasing hospital performance. They're all things where digital can play, play a role. All right, so talk to me about what you're doing over there, what kind of research you've got on oh, at CSIRO. And for those who are not familiar with that organization, mm -hmm. say briefly, David, what it does. Sure, so CSIRO is Australia's national science agency. Uh, we're about, uh, well, over 5,000 scientists and engineers across many, many different areas of science, from, from astronomy um, <coughs> to um, uh, land and water. We, we work with um, uh, NASA. We are, we're NASA's partner in Australia for um, collecting information from, from some of their missions going Very on. Cool. Um, uh, through to, uh, we run a, a big boat down to Antarctica to do land and water, uh, to do oceans and atmosphere research. I want to ask you about climate change so bad and resisting. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, and, and then I'm part of CSRO's health and biosecurity business unit. Uh, and so we do uh, things around, um, obviously, biosecurity security and the increasing threat from zoonotic diseases as well as antimicrobial resistance okay. um, which which comes from the plant animal and, and uh, plant and animal world uh, I lead our digital health research program and we have a health and nutrition research program as well within that business unit okay so let's talk about what you're working on like give sure. me a little bit of an idea yeah, here yeah. of what you got under yeah. what, what, you, what do you have under review over there yeah no well, look we, we, we engage really strongly out into health community we've got a great relationship with a number of um, health agencies around Australia Australia. We do a lot with Queensland Health, where I'm based up in Brisbane, but we work with New South Wales Health, Victoria Health, um, uh, and the Department of Health in Western Australia, uh, doing things like telehealth. Okay. Um, so we're, we're actually trialling now a, a medical imaging and communication app for burns, um, burns and wounds, okay. so that when someone's discharged from hospital, they can still safely send um, uh, photos of their wound to clinicians for review, uh, to know whether to come back into hospital and, and that sort of thing. Um, uh, that's it's one of our, our West Australian um, projects. Um, th uh, through Queensland, we do a lot of mobile health research. So we work with clinicians to develop models of care that, that involve providing the patient with a, a mobile phone app, which they send information back to the clinician through a portal. So okay. it's, it's a great way of, of making those services and things like gestational diabetes or cardiac rehabilitation, sure. peritoneal dialysis, looking at how we can make those services better for the patient, keep them from having to come into hospital so much, um, get better outcomes so that we're actually providing better care and of course improve the efficiency of the healthcare system. Now I have a lot of startups that watch me yep. and I'm sure they're wondering right now like oh David where are you getting those solutions that you're deploying in ah. these different types of tests? So sure. how do you guys do this? Do you grow them in house? Um, like you had mentioned the telehealth yep. service that looks at the, the sure. wounds and the yep. burns. Are you building those in house or are you sourcing in from outside? Uh, it's a bit of uh, look we do a lot of a lot of uh, in-house development oh, research cool. and development. Um, we do a lot in uh, data interoperability in healthcare. There's the new fire standard, which I hope a lot of your startups who are listening to you yes. uh, are, are, are looking at using. And we have um, done a lot of work over the years on uh, the clinical terminology aspect okay. of data interoperability in healthcare. And we're very involved with Graham on the development of the fire terminology subsystem. So we've got a, a great solution for that. And we've worked with the Australian Digital Health Agency to provide a national clinical terminology service, which really fits into those fire environments. So that's a, a solution which we built in house, which is now a commercial product product as well. How do you see some of these projects that you're working on scaling? Are they getting, are, are they received, are they well received enough where you think they're going to scale pretty quickly here? Um, so, so look, scaling is always an issue. We yeah. don't have, especially <laughs> in Australia, um, where we don't have the same access to capital um, to spin out. And this is something that's part of the Australia's National Innovation Challenge, is that we have lots of startups, but they tend to have to go to the US or Europe to get enough capital to scale sure. into a, a fully commercial product before they can um, come back and that's just not that's not just in healthcare that's across across the board, across mm -hmm. the board in Australia so CSIRO is doing a number of things working with the federal government we now have a, a venture capital uh, arm that provide does provide oh, venture excellent. capital to startups um, and we're seeing more more venture capital uh, come into or be made available in Australia through a number of different initiatives from our federal government so that's something which I, I hope will change the the scale up potential um, but but we've got lots of technologies which we are seeing, which we're scaling up ourselves through, uh, I mentioned the terminology server, where we've worked with the Digital Health Agency to make that available all around Australia, and we've got over 70, 70 organisations using that now. Um, 
we're doing a lot in the clinical research area and medical imaging, and we're starting to turn some. We're starting to partner with uh, companies and startups uh, through license deals to actually turn those algorithms, whether it's for diagnosing Alzheimer's disease okay. early or for musculoskeletal injuries. Uh, we're doing a lot of work in cerebral palsy at the moment to identify early early markers of cerebral palsy so that we can do better rehabilitation. And we're, we're partnering now with commercial companies to look at how we can take those algorithms through a, a uh, regular approval process. Fantastic. Well, that's exciting stuff. Yeah. You may have accidentally opened the floodgate for um, VC so. investment over here. All these guys are, who are watching out there, <laughs> they're going to be with me here next year. Well, thank you so much for stopping by to talk with us, David. It's a pleasure to speak with you as always. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health here at HIC 2019. Thank you so much for watching.